very quick review of an old kit. I know you've probably already seen this before. I've got all three of these. I've got the blue tit, the bullfinch, and the robin. Uh, let's just take these off. These are old kits. I bought them off a guy who was re, um, who was selling up all this stock. I actually got the whole lot off of him. I bought the whole thing, lock, stock, and barrel off of him. Um, the first thing to notice: there's no bag in there. Um, it was already missing when I opened the thing. When I, when I, when I bought the thing, it was already opened. Um, the instructions, you've got the back of the bird painting, you've got where it is in the world, in the red here, you've got a little bit on uh, what it eats and that, and it's habits down the side as well. Nice little bit of information there, quite a bit, actually more than you get on the net. Um, on the instructions, the first five is for the base basically, uh, the tree and the base. Uh, the next seven, uh, six to ten, it's the birds themselves, and number eleven is fitting them to the base, and including putting on the the back end of the claws to hold them onto the tree. Um, oh yes, there's a couple of bits I wanted to show you on this. This beak is open. You will be able to see inside it. So, what we're going to have to do is paint inside that beak. It's going to be difficult because the beak's not open that much. The second piece is the eyes. Um, the way I'm going to do these is I'm going to paint them and leave them until the last. Until everything's up, everything else is painted and it's just about to go on the base. And then I'll put the eyes in. It'll be easier than trying to paint round them. Especially with blending. Um, be it, like I said, it'd be a lot easier. Uh, let's put that to one side there and there. The base. It's the first thing out of the box. Again, this doesn't rock. This this is absolutely flat. There's no warping or nothing in this. Um, other things in here are the birds themselves, as you can see here. Um, I can see a little bit of flashing around on the spur here, but on the actual parts, there's nothing. And I'll say flashing. Uh, what I'm saying is the the actual sprue is bigger on one side than the other. So um, it's not actual flashing itself. Just the lining up of the two two moulds is not absolutely perfect on the sprue. But I don't think they worry about the sprue. That's just to get the, the plastic in. As you can see here, there's a step. So they don't worry about that too much. Um, but the rest of the parts they're absolutely crisp and clean there is no flashing uh, and where there is a double double line uh, double moulding uh, there is a little mould line around it fractional uh, but where there isn't a moulding like a mould line oh well it's right around the edge of it even when I put these two parts together as you can see there there's, the gap virtually disappears. Bit of glue and that will completely disappear. I think that's about all for now. Thanks for watching this little review. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, that's the Wildlife Airfix Blue Tip. Uh, This is the Blue Tip Wildlife um, model. Uh, I thought I'd start something different. I've been doing a lot of, lot of the same stuff at the moment. Uh, all them airplanes, I sort of I'll forget them. I'll, I'll do something different. Uh, okay, excuse me. Right, the bird. Uh, I've gone ahead and built these. Um, that's three pieces. This bird is four pieces. This has got the extra tail piece to put on down here. Um, Two, four, six, two, four, six, eight piece. Eight pieces for the tree. Um, it's not worth doing a video for all them things. Um, next time when I do the, oh, I should say when I do the bullfinch or the robin, I will do um, a couple of photographs of the build. 
Uh, you don't really need to see any more than that. Um, you know how things build. Uh, so that'll have to be painted first, that second, and then glued together. Uh, right. Um, filler. Uh, I just want to talk to you about filler a bit. Filler. This bird has had some filler along here. It's had a, it had a little gap just at the base of the tail feathers. Um, it's got a little bit here, just below the beak. A little tiny divot. That'll have to be filled. And also, I had a hole in the wing here. Just where the wing joined the body. Uh, the, the wing joined the bottom but wing and joined the body. There was a bit of a hole here. I don't know why, but there was. Um, so I've had to fill that there. That's the extent of the filler. There is no more. The tree, the joints on the tree between the two halves, lovely. They, they've gone together. I've just scraped a bit of the glue off that squirted out and it's blended in between the bark and the, of the tree. So no problems there. The problem comes when I've joined like this branch to this branch and this branch to the trunk and this branch to the trunk. The big flat areas um, have needed a bit of carving down and a bit of work doing on them and I've put some spray on it to check the joints um, of these now and I can see that I'm going to need some filler underneath here and a little bit round here. So again, not a lot of filler to do on that but there is some. Having said that, this bird, there was no filler on that bird whatsoever. It went together perfectly. Secondly, the joint, the joint actually runs around the top of the head here, along this part of the body, underneath the wing, down to the tail, round underneath the tail, back up this side and back up to the head. Um, Having said that, I've used this joint as a practice joint to do all the carving to make sure I can get it done right. And it doesn't really need to be done because when you put the wing on, if I can pop that on there, it's going to cover up that joint. You're not going to see them. The same the other side. You see, when I put the wing on, oh, hang on, let's just, can't hold it in place here. Hold it in place there, there we go. When I put the other wing on, it's hiding the joint there. So you won't see them at all. It's just the joints forward of these wing sections that you will see. But I need to get them done right. Um, that's it for now. I'm going to start painting soon. I'm going to leave this a little time to dry and put some more undercoat on it to start the painting. Now then. I'm going to start this build. Uh, but I, duh, duh. Not build, the painting. I've already built them quite some time ago. Now I've lost the video to, that I've done building these it got wiped off the hard drive now I was doing these the other day and I sprayed them blue um, with Hi. the acrylic Hi. paint uh, I thought well it's it's done it's, it's basically that's all done um, I've built the whole thing up to the painting stage um, the other bird there has got two the wings have been kept separate uh, the claws are being kept separate so have the eyes the claws and eyes have been kept separate here, um, and the tree's been kept separate basically from the base, uh, so I can paint these up individually and then put them together after painting. Uh, now I thought, well, beginning of January uh, 2014, let's start with an unusual one. What have I got? Oh, hang on, I've been doing those birds the other day. I'll do these. So. That's what I decided to do. Now I've got the draw I've got the drawings up here. I've got the drawings up here and the box lid as well as up there. So I can see the painting of the birds themselves. So I can see what I need to paint, where I need to paint it. And I'm only gonna be using the small cup on my airbrush now. Well there's no there's no cup on it at all actually. This is just the uh, where you screw your cup in, so I don't need a lot of this paint. Now what I've done is I've, I've used humble acrylics on this one, as I will be throughout this build. 
A couple of builds I'm going to be doing with humble planks only. Um, the reason for that is I think I can use these quite nicely on this size of model and a 70 second scale aircraft as well. Will you shut up? See what I mean? I'll get this coming through here first. That needs to be pressured up a little bit more. Um, oh, it's only up 15. All right, put that 20, and we have a nice finish there. Right, let me just check this pot here. What I've done in here, what I've done in this one is this pot was only half full. I filled it up nearly to the top. I left a little bit le less than that, and. I'll give it a mix with future. Now, for what I need to do, this is perfect uh, because I've got to draw around the face of the bird now, and it comes from the beak basically here, up here. Uh, it also goes to about the middle of the eye, which is basically where I've got it, so I'm going to put that in. There, in that black. Put the eye socket in, because that's all black. There. Now, I'm not trying to cover this. At all, I'm not covering this at all. It, 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 it's getting the paint's going on, but it's leaving a bit of the white showing through as well, or coloured with a slight black on it. Like this comes up here. dark spots along the bottom edge of all the feathers here so I'm going to give those a little bit of a blow a bit like post shading really um, uh, pre-shading sorry pre-shading is what this is more like Right, now I've just refilled with some of the white, humble white, and we'll have a look at see how we're doing with this. Not too bad. And we'll just recover some of this white down because I want this. We'll have to spray the black on it to serve it. A bit much. We've gone over a bit, but that doesn't matter. Can we do this with this? Whoops, a bit too wet there. We'll draw that back. Oh, 
every time I spray with this gun, I'm learning a bit more and my technique's getting a little better each time. As long as I don't um, have a long period between spraying and I'll, I'll retain the knowledge. for a second. I'm going to get some white tack down. Oh, I need a few sausages from this. A few sausages. No, no, I'm talking about white tack company. Put that grin off your face. You're not getting any. It's not eating time. Oh dear. He's got that, and he's got that crooked little smile on his face. Thinking, oh, he said sausages. <laughs> Yeah. Ah oh dear. Alright, let's get some of these worms done. Here, and look at that on there. Talk to, well, I need some thin ones and some thick ones. I think what I'll do is I'll do the thin ones first. Cause I'll... <coughs> and then we'll wrap these around when we need them, which is. Looking at it now, it's a This is how I've done it. I've used a white wood, uh, white wood, white tack, worm, and covered up the places that I want to keep black. Uh, now then, if I take this off now, I've done what I, as I said, I did, did one side before, and uh, just take this off now, and I should have quite a nice finish to the bird. Hopefully, I will. I'll have to re blacken that beak again, but uh, not too bad, not too shabby at all. I think that'll do nicely. Uh, if somebody will stop coughing, thank you. Uh, the folded wing one has got again the side of the face done, both sides on this particular one, and the head uh, again. I've got to put the blue on the top here afterwards. Um, and the next thing down here is I've got a yellowy green to get put on here. Um, basically, what it is, it's, it's, it's he's got a yellow body all over. This top part of the wing here is a greenish colour again. So we need to uh, excuse me. We need to do the yellow all the way round, basically, uh, leaving a little bit of white patch uh, according to this coloration just at the bottom here um, which I can do quite easily uh, but the rest of it's got to be all done in yellow uh, I also also I've sh pre-shaded some of the areas in that I'm going to need pre-shaded like behind the wings here and uh, the wings on this one here I've 
I've taken down. Uh, I need to put some deeper black in here. Um, these will be uh, a grey blue green, uh, grey bluey colour along here, and these are then going to be the bright blues up here. Uh, again, the shading I've done on this here. I don't know whether this will come through. But I'm hoping it will. But, uh, on here. So uh, that's going to be it for the moment. I'll uh, see you all soon. And uh, these humble paints are a little bit more tricky to use, but I can use them. Let me just put the back on this thing here. So until next time. No, uh, until in a few seconds time, for you, for me, it's going to be a little bit longer. I'm going to make a fresh cup of coffee, because that's cold. Excuse me, tack. Uh, get something to eat, and then I can uh, carry on and do some more of this. I wasn't recording this. I've taken the mask off to show you it. I wasn't recording it. I just went to turn it off, and I thought, oh, pain. But here it is, I've taken the mask off as you can see now, and uh, I've got yellow left on here. Um, it's not too bad, the yellow, it needs a little bit of highlighting and maybe a little bit of shading. But it's basically there, uh, I've got a nice colour match for that. Um, and again here, I freehanded this, oh hang on, I freehanded this one. Um, around the top here, I might just have to touch the black in a little tiny bit um, but it, it went on there, not too bad, I'm getting better at the airbrushing so uh, in saying that I've just got to go do a bit more to this tonight and uh, I'll just touch the black in around here tonight and do the, redo the beak